Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz and today's Quick Tip Thursday session is going to be covering five tools that I feel you need to know about in black and white effects. Black and white effects is a very comprehensive set of tools and it includes over 200 presets. So it's a very powerful black and white conversion program and it has a ton of different tools. So today we're going to be going over what I feel are the top five tools you may need to know about when using black and white effects. So let's get into the program. I'm just going to make a quick copy of this. <clears throat> Filters, Topaz Labs, Topaz Black and White Effects. All right, I'm going to reset all over here on the bottom right real quick. If you're not familiar with black and white effects, please check out our introduction to the program on our YouTube channel. Um, it's youtube.com slash topazlabs. And if you want more advanced training on any of the tools that we're covering, we have specific uh, we have specific webinars on some of those tools. So you can find that on our YouTube channel as well. But the first tool I think everybody should know about within black and white effects is one of the types of, uh, or one of the modules here within our conversion tab, and that's going to be our adaptive exposure. So black and white effects integrates, um, Topaz adjusts adaptive exposure technology, and it really helps to increase the dynamic range of your image and give your image some pop and depth very, very quickly. You can just turn it on by checking the adaptive exposure box to the left, and you can see immediately how it starts to affect your image. I'll show you that one more time. Here's before and after, and that's just the default settings. So if you open it on up, you'll see that you have the sliders here that we can really control everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as I said, adaptive exposure really helps to increase the dynamic range of your image. So as you increase your adaptive exposure, you'll start to see more detail um, come into your highlights as well as your shadows areas and it tries to kind of balance out your image. It's, it's very localized contrast that's being added into your image. The adaptive exposure and region sliders are connected with one another so as you take your adaptive exposure up your region slider will affect how that adaptive exposure is applied to your image by how many regions you separate your image into. As you increase the amount of regions in your image, the adaptive exposure is applied to smaller and smaller areas and that's how you get that localized contrast and you can start to create these HDR um, tone mapped effects very easily with this adaptive exposure technology. But what I tend to use it for a lot is actually correcting any exposure issues that I might have within my image and getting a nice balance to all of my tones in a very simple way. I tend to take the region slider up quite a bit and then use my adaptive exposure over here on the lower end to just open up some of that detail and get some detail into my highlights as well. Here's before and after. Let me show you that one more time, before and after. So you can use it very subtly as well. We have some other sliders in here for you, but the other area that you definitely need to know about within the adaptive exposure tool is going to be this process details independently. When you're applying adaptive exposure to something that has a lot of uh, smooth areas like skies or skin, Many times you want to decrease the amount of detail that's being added as you're changing your tonal values with that adaptive exposure because automatically within that technology the adaptive exposure changes are actually increasing or decreasing your detail as well and we try to do it in a way that works for a standard uh, you know a standard setting but if you don't like the way it's being applied the detail you can click on the process details independently still get the exposure control but you'll notice that it's a much softer 
um, effect that's being applied. And then you can come into your detail and detail boost and add detail separately. So that's the first area you need to know about within black and white effects. The second area that I think is really essential is the color sensitivity tool. And that's also located within the conversion area. Color sensitivity, when you open it up, you'll see that there are six color sliders. So what this does is, or the technology here, you bring in an RGB image to black and white effects. So you're not able to bring in a grayscale image. If you do have a grayscale image that you want to work with in black and white effects, you first have to convert it to an RGB color mode. And the reason is, is for this color sensitivity and color filter, we actually take the color information from that input image and allow you to adjust those color ranges to give you very, very specific control over tones. So let me just turn this on. And let's say I wanted to have a darker sky. I can come in here to my blue slider and take that to the left and it's going to just darken that sky up a little. And I'm going to maybe take my cyan down a little as well. Maybe I want to brighten up my foreground here and that was kind of a muddy color uh, to that marshy area. So I think maybe the reds as I take that up, yes, you'll see that start to open up those tones. So you have a ton of control within this color sensitivity. Within our color filter area below it, this is a more traditional simulation of color filters that you would apply to your lens when you're in the field. And it simulates if you're shooting black and white film. So for example, if you put a red filter um, on, it'll darken your skies, but it will also affect the other tones in your image. So it affects more than just one tone when you're using the color filter. Within the color sensitivity, you can specifically take whatever tonal range you want and apply it. So I love this area. The next area I think you need to know about is going to be our detail brush, and that is located within the local adjustment brushes. We have several local adjustment brushes for you, Dodge, Burn, um, selective color and a smoothing or blurring brush, but the one that I think is the most essential for me and the one that I continue to use and will actually bring pictures in here to use this detail brush only on is uh, this detail brush. We need to click on the detail to make it a detail brush and you can selectively add in detail. When you're working with a black and white or monochrome image, the ability to increase your texture and contrast in one area is really awesome. <laughs> the, to be able to go in and just add um, that texture and, and contrast in one area will really draw the viewer's eye to that specific area. So with this image, um, this kind of field here has it's pretty soft and the whole image is actually pretty soft so if I wanted to add detail in here it'd be very easy to do so with this detail brush I'm just gonna make sure my detail is clicked on I'll take my brush size and I'll just leave it about there the opacity I'm gonna take up so you really see how it adds the detail in but usually I'd leave that opacity a little bit further down and then the edge aware brush is probably uh, or the edge aware technology is very, very helpful in many cases. And this is one of those cases where it's really helpful when there's a distinct line like this between what I want to enhance and what I don't want to enhance, the sky. I don't want to add detail into the sky. I can take my edge aware all the way up to one. And as long as I keep the crosshairs of the middle of the brush on the tonal area that I want to affect and add more detail to and don't go over into the sky, it's only going to apply it to this fields area. So I'm just going to come along the edge and just add this detail in real quick and there we have it. You'll see what is applied down here in the uh, thumbnail mask view here but let me just show you a before and after. Here's before and after. This does amazing things on eyes, uh, so if you ha are trying to do a black and white portrait and you really want somebody's eyes to start sparkling, using this detail brush in a uh, subtle way on the eyes will have a dramatic difference in your portraits. It's an awesome brush, so that is a, that's something to know about. Alright, the next area is going to be our quad tone. Now this is something that we have done a specific session on, so if you get confused or anything like that, 
check out that session for a little bit more in depth, but basically it adds four tones or it replaces the tones within your image with four tones of your choice. So I'm just going to open that up. I'll go ahead and zoom out and turn it on so you can see these four default tones, how they're applied to the image. So this black tone is going to be applied to the shadow regions of my image because that tonal slider or the color one region slider is all the way at zero which affects my blacks. And then we have this brown slider at our lower mid-tones, so you'll see those in the darker grays within the image. Then we have the pink at our um, lighter mid-tones, so you'll see that within the lighter mid-tones and the white color is affecting the whites. Now, a lot of people come in here and they say, what the heck is going on? Even once you apply colors that you might like, which we can do so by just clicking on the um, color swatch, it'll pull up a little color picker. Let me just get some colors together real quick. I'm going to go with more of a brown tone instead of black. With this lower mid-tones, I want to keep this brown, but I want it to be much less saturated and more gray because I want to make it a subtle warm tone. So I'm just going to drag my slider down and give myself a very, um, you know, darker mid-tone browny gray, warm gray. And now we have our pink, and I'm still sticking with the brown theme, so I'm going to come over here towards brown. And actually, it's a little too dark there for me, or a little too saturated, so I'll just take it closer to the gray. Say OK. And now, instead of bright white, because that doesn't really go with a warm tone, I'm going to take that up to more of an eggshell or, or a cream. Say OK. And now I have these specific tones that I personally chose. That's why I really love this. But this isn't where it ends. This isn't all the control because I have muddied up my grays here. It's not looking great the way that it's applied. Always come in and play with these sliders if you come into this quad tone because it's basically contrast control and color or tone placement within your image. So you can come in here and get exactly uh, what you, the tone that you'd like and then apply it in the tonal regions you'd like as well by moving these sliders around. So you have a lot of control within this one uh, tool. And please know this one tool, this quad tone effect, is used in the majority of the uh, presets over here on the left, especially when it comes to things like our albumin collection or um, you know, the Platinum Collection, because these types of looks are very difficult to simulate within a traditional conversion program, but with our adding this quad tone in, we're able to come in and be very, very um, subtle about our use of tone, get it exactly where we need it to be to create these realistic darkroom looks. All right, our last one that I want to talk about is going to be film grain. Film grain is located below the quad tone in the finishing touches, and the reason that film grain within black and white effects is pretty unique and why it's on my list of tools I think you need to know about is because we actually scanned in a ton of black and white film and extracted the grain and put that into a true grain engine. So that is where all this grain comes from. So it's very realistic when you apply it uh, from the presets. And then if you want to kind of make it your own a little bit, I'm just turning it on, uh, the Kodak Tri-X 400 is the default. So let's just go on in to about 100. Always look at it at 100. Uh, the grain, that's will just help uh, showing you exactly how it's applied to your image. I'm going to uncheck it so you see it without grain and now we'll recheck it and to get a little bit more grain in there or a lot more grain actually I'm going to go ahead and go down to Kodak Tmax Pro 3200 which used to be one of my favorites my favorite film um, and get that really heavy gnarly grain in there just so you can see how it's applied. Then if I want to take my contrast down, if it's a little too heavy, I can come down to the sliders and um, actually simulate uh, the grain. So it's not, uh, it's 
taking the information from this true grain here that's been scanned in and then allows you to kind of simulate your own effect if it's not applied perfectly. So this grain engine is awesome. It can really finish your black and white conversion off beautifully. So those are the top five tools that I feel you need to know about within black and white effects and what makes it a unique program. So that's the adaptive exposure, color sensitivity, our detail brush, quad tone, and film grain. All right, thanks everybody. I hope you're able to join us for some upcoming black and white webinars. Have a great morning or afternoon, night, wherever you are. Take care.